It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, on the second leg, we have Dr. Sebastian Arienze, who joins the conversation this morning. Um, he is the Managing Director of Interactive Marketing Associates Limited. Uh, Dr. Sebastian Arienze, it's good to have you join us. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. All right, then, so let's get to the crux of the conversation. It's been quoted or been stated by stakeholders of recent time that, uh, you know, uh, young persons with entrepreneurship skills would help grow the economy. Uh, the question is how? How can these things be? Dr. Arenze, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Yes. So my question is that experts over time just recently had gathered and, and in, in the discussion it was being put out that to grow the economy and help the economy get off all of the social crisis that's faced to it, then um, youth with entrepreneurship skills would help grow the economy. The question is how can this be, especially when you juxtapose that with all the factors that you know, might affect the growth of the economy? Yeah, um, if, do I come in? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, if I should come in, um, what good economy is productivity. And productivity, um, capacity for product, productivity is growing. And maybe it's important at this point in time to point out some um, non individuals who have food. Of their nation. For example, Apple and the world. Someone like uh, Bill Gates. Someone like Toyota. Someone like Honda. You know, um, these are the people who, um, while in school, they caught the wave. And that today we read about them as people who dropped out of school. Not because they were not able to cope with the rigors of schooling. They had ideas that they felt that many in school was going to slow them down. And the only way they can explore is to leave the school and, and deploy what they have learned and what the ideas they have. And today, the gate uh, was, was the recent, the richest man in the world that impacted so much to the economy of America and the world at large. The same goes for the other ones, uh, the other names that have mentioned. All right. Can um, I continue? Yes, go ahead, yeah, yes, go ahead, go ahead. please. Yes, go ahead. So, um, in school, and again also, then that, that is, the link now goes to the kind of curriculum that we run in school here. You understand? Because uh, we need to begin to focus on um, uh, education that is uh, productive. Productive education is where people, children are in touch, they are taught in school, skills, that while in school, they catch it, they learn it, and the urge they want to go out, they are not going out, they are not leaving school to become, uh, to get to a job, to become job, for job creators. Mm. Um, so, well, let's even stay with your, your thoughts now. You have talked about um, having... Uh, institutions or students being or young people or persons being exposed to a kind of curriculum that would ensure productivity. And my question now yeah. here is how come we have not thought in this light? And so uh, what, how will we now have experts who are thinking that when you have young persons who have entrepreneurial skills or who have the skills that will help grow the economy, it becomes you know, a plus for us. When, if you look at the educational system uh, or the structure, it's not set in that direction. How many conventional universities or institutions or structures can we boast of in the country? Well, um, uh, I don't want to fight on schools, but some of the private schools, private universities have the country are doing well in that regard. But it's from from the public. Well, generally, only now students on their feet can make the effort to demand uh, the one and uh, curriculum that are uh, available to universities abroad. 
access to them. But again, also because our system is just uh, the one of cut and paste, we copy, we copy exactly uh, the kind of medication we, 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 that was handed down to us uh, by the patient. And remember then, uh, the patient for us was not to create uh, producers, was not to create people with creative mind. They were they, 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 what the state education would be the low industry, the, the system that they have created. You know. So um the that is the reason why here it's all about uh cram and pass. Nobody talks about how uh it's just the arm. Dr. Arinze, we, we, we would just uh, try and say, because we're not having a very smooth, uh, you know, communication with you right here, the line's not very clear, and we're barely struggling to hear you speak this morning and share your thoughts on the issue. But I, I, I'll come back to the studio because Kofi's here, and we're, we're hoping that we're able to establish, you know, a smooth connection with you, and then we'll get right back, okay? Now, I think that Kofi, you know, in order I was going to say is that it's a good thing for us to you know, come out and have all of this postulation. I like to stay on the side of reality because most times it feel like we, we come up and then we're just putting out some lofty, beautiful ideas, especially when we have conferences and, you know, business meetings. So we come out and say, hey, you know what? If we do X, Y, Z, this is going to bring the result. But coming back to the situation, so we have conventional universities, which are the regular, and so we also have vocational. And if you talk about skills and acquisition of skills, you ask yourself, the number of, you know, conventional universities, if you want to, you know, have a count of it. Um, and comparing that to the number of vocational institutions. How many vocational institutions do we have that we encourage people who have skill sets? Because we're talking about, you know, not the regular. People have to have these skill sets. You know, they have to be very uh, productive, right? Because we know that the conventional institution or university, we get to talk about theories. And, and some of these theories don't even relate with the current realities of our lives, how to deal with and solve the problems that we, you know, face with on a daily basis, you know, um, the current issue that people might be facing. So it's just really worrisome that it feels like sometimes we come together uh, for conferences and meetings and then we begin to just chunk out some lofty things and when we look at the, our reality as a people, it doesn't correlate. So it's like we're speaking vague stuff and just trying to sound very well, intellectual. Well, I guess it's back of the line. Uh, Doc, if you can hear me, uh, I would like to ask you to talk about the the ASU strike and um, how it's affecting the young people and maybe what they can do to be able to get some of these skills in the time that they have. I mean, is this a period to to for the students to try and see what they can do? Because I, I saw a tweet by uh, a, a, a very... Um, uh, respected, you know, Nigerian when it comes to uh, 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 financial, you know, uh, uh, discussions on Twitter, economic discussions on Twitter. His name is Kalu Aja. And Kalu Aja had a, an interesting thing to say about the ASU strike. I'll just go to that now. Uh, Kalu Aja said that, you know what, the ASU strike is on. And he talked about um, what students can do, um, what the federal government is doing and what parents are doing in all that. And this is what he says, um, quote, that students need to get skills in this time or to get something to do uh, for themselves. So, so I want you to speak to this. How can students take advantage of this strike to be able to get themselves up uh, to the level they should be entrepreneurially? It's also important to mention that it's quite unfortunate that um, a country like Nigeria will allow the school to be shut down for upwards of six months, seven months, and we're still going back and forth on it. However, there's a way um, parents and um, the, the students can help the situation by one, the students enrolling themselves in some vocations. Um, I know some students, for example, in the area of technology, who have uh, who, who are attached to doing it, always already attached, attached to um, a place called uh, Computer Village in Lagos. They go there every morning, and there's no amount, there's nothing uh, that concerns school. A laptop they cannot work on. 
So they didn't learn that from school. They learned that from um, the, within this, this short period that was first on them, which I was so first on them. Yeah. That's the one. Some of Oh, we seem to be having a network network connection. Can you hear us, Doctor? I can put it through. Okay. All right. The, the connection is... Time. All right. We're we, we having so a bit I, of... A, what, so yes. what, what, so what I'm trying to say is that a good number of them also are not idle. They are trying to see how best they can improve themselves by learning uh, one skill, one vocation or the other. And I made mention of some people that I met at Computer Village, learning how to repair phones and laptops. And some of them are already proficient in doing that. I also know some ladies who are, uh, who are learning fashion design and um, they can sew very well. The one that sewed for my wife is in part two in a uni bank. And he sewed it so very well, you know. And these are, I know what, some parents are really, but they are ready. However, there's a lot of distraction, you understand? So not every child has such opportunity. Not every parent can afford that, you know. And that is the reason why a good number of them uh, will not have opportunity to do that and they want to go to the streets to do what a normal area boy will do. All right. Interesting. Now, I, I've been able to whip up Carlos' tweet. He said, uh, federal government doesn't care. They leave in 2023. ASU doesn't care. They will get paid. Students, he asks, limited choices. Number one, private university expensive. Number two, abroad, expensive and visa. Number three, he says, learn a skill not as expensive. And you've said it all, uh, Doc, that you know someone going to Computer Village to learn one or two things. And um, I think it's time to encourage the students, from what you've said, to be like their, their mates. So going to Computer Village and some other places to learn tailoring, to learn the computer uh, uh, you know, uh, maintenance and fixing and all that, to use this time to build themselves. Um, uh, some, some people will say that some of the great inventions of our time, even some of the uh, big employment tech companies we have in Nigeria today, were started by students. Yeah, Jobberman, for instance, uh, was started by a student. Um, maybe yeah. this could be a time that uh, some students could create something that would even mean they have to leave, to leave school to just look after their business for a while. Um, it's, it's quite interesting. We, we have to leave it at this, at this time. Um, and, uh, of course, to say thank you for joining us uh, all the way from Delta State for this uh, short but interesting conversation. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so that. much, uh, Dr. Sebastian Arenze, for being part of The Breakfast. We appreciate your thoughts and your insight on the issue this morning. But that's M M Mercy, it's, it's quite interesting to see, you know, that, um, uh, like the doc said, a lot of people, some students he knows, are going out to get trained uh, in, in, in one or two things. And this is to encourage students out there. If the students are not doing it, the parents should do this. Get your cohorts enrolled in one thing or the other. Let them look, look at the skills they have, because it's a dangerous time to be idle. You know, I was, I was glad to have been called by a teacher friend of mine who said she has a, a former student who has been home, you know, because of the strike. And she says, this girl is uh, talented in public speaking. Can she come do some internship in, in a media house? I said, yeah, let her come see me. You know, so it's not about getting a job or getting what is going to give you money. Let them go and serve as interns. As much as as much as that, yeah, you know, as much as that's you know, is a brilliant thing to you actually say. It's also important that uh, there's a counterculture to this other aspect, which I talked about. You know, the idea of having a certificate because everyone is driven by wanting to have a certificate. If you look at it, just recently there was a jam examination that was conducted to which university that's on strike. I mean, you still have people who are in the system who have not even uh, finished the academic calendar. And so then you're going to have another set of person. It's just the mindset. So we need to, as a government, and that's why we exist, to ensure that you know we provide you know protection and what have you, security for the people. And security apart from saying physical security, but it includes you know, security in other aspects. Let us also you know, have policies that would encourage us having you know, vocational institutions. Yes, we know we have uh, you know, vocational institutions, but we need to encourage more of it. And people need to understand that, hey, it's not about going to university to get a certificate, but it's okay, you know, for people to develop skills, and that will go a long way. Yes, we, we, ha we have to go and leave it at this point. Uh, it's been an interesting conversation this morning on The Breakfast. We'll be back tomorrow.
Um, don't forget, you can always follow up on our programs if you miss any bit of it. We have our social media handles actively putting out content on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, like you can see on your screen, Plus TV Africa. On YouTube, we're also at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Kofi Bartels. Thanks for your time. I am Masipopo. Thanks for joining us.